I mentioned there were two methods. Um, the second method is actually the more common method, but it takes a little while to get used to. The second method is called completing a square. It's where we take the x terms that we have in the standard form and we create the perfect square binomial using a little bit of logic and a little bit of back and forth algebra. It's pretty straightforward once you get used to it, but it can be a little confusing at the beginning. So we're going to look at three examples. Um, one thing to note about this process is that there are, even though everyone eventually gets the same answer in the completing square process, there are lots of ways people talk about how to do it. So I'm going to talk about it one way, but you may go on YouTube and find multiple ways that people do exactly the same thing, but they talk through it a little bit differently. So if you're struggling with maybe my explanation, I encourage you to go out and look at some other YouTube videos uh, and see how somebody else describes it, and that may click a little bit better. Um, so in my process, I've listed out some steps that I kind of think about. I'm going to start with an easier example where there, the a is 1. If the a is not 1, then there's an extra step at the beginning. And I'll look at two examples of that. But I want to start the process of completing squared just with a simpler example. So here we have the function f of x equals x squared plus 10x plus 28. What we're going to do is we're going to skip a line because we're going to need some room to go back and kind of show some work in a minute. And we're going to rewrite f of x. And we're going to take these first two terms and use them, that x squared and the 10x, to figure out what this binomial in the vertex form has to be. And it turns out it's a pretty simple idea. You just want to create the binomial in here that goes inside the square by basically undoing the square and bringing down the x, and then taking half of this 10. Whatever that coefficient of x is, take half of it. So I'm going to say x plus 5. It's that simple. You bring the x down and then you take half of that coefficient, half of 10 is 5. Now, here's the back and forth part. What we've just done is we've created a perfect square. When you create a perfect square, we want to think about what that represents. So I'm going to go back to that line I skipped and I'm going to foil out what I just created. When you foil this out, x plus 5 times x plus 5. Remember, first outside, inside, last, and foil. We're going to get x squared. And then we're going to have 5 times x, or 5x, and another 5x on the inside. So you're going to get the 10x, which is what I wanted. And then you're going to get a constant, because the last thing you're going to multiply in the FOIL is 5 times itself. 5 times 5 is 25. So remember, we already had a 28 that was part of the problem. What we've done, in essence, is created by creating the, the perfect square, we've added this extra 25 on top of the 28 that already was there. So we've added this extra stuff, this extra constant term. We've created it by creating the perfect square. The way we adjust the equation to keep it balanced and keep it representing the same uh, function is we subtract that same value from the constant, from the 28 over here. So we actually adjust the constant with the new value that gets created by the perfect square. When we do that, 28 minus 25 means that my k value is now 3. So remember how I said the a and the b and the c over here compared with the a, the h, and the k? I said the a is the exact same thing in both equations, but the b and the c and the h and the k are not the same. This c is definitely not k. That's why they're given different letters. So we started with a c of 28, but my k value ends up being 3 because the c, that constant, has to be adjusted based on the perfect square I created. So again, the way I've described this isn't necessarily the exact way that everyone would describe it, but it is the way that it's always made sense to me. Um, and I've had a lot of success with it over, over the years. Um, but if it doesn't quite click with you, look at the next two examples. If that still doesn't click, feel free to contact me or uh, try looking at um, some other videos on YouTube because there's a lot of great videos out there that you know basically tell you the same thing but maybe use different wording for how you do it. And sometimes just that slightly different wording can make a difference. To do a quick check, we would simply multiply what we got out, 
x plus 5 squared plus 3. Multiply that out, x squared plus 5x plus 5x, I'm foiling here, plus 25 plus 3. Collect like terms, 5x and 5x is 10x. 25 plus 3 is 28. And you see that we get back to where we started. So um, this is called completing the square. And we started with our first example with an a value of 1, just to make it a little bit easier. Here's a second example. Uh, in this example, I want to again use the completing the square process to write this function h in vertex form. I've emphasized here that we do have an a that is not 1 this time. Uh, when your a, or your leading coefficient for the x squared term, is not 1, there is a first step of factoring it out, because we need it to be outside of the perfect square. So we're going to factor, in this case, our a is negative 1. We're going to factor a negative 1 out of, and here's the key, only factor it from the x terms. Leave the minus 9 as the constant out to the side, out of the factorization. So if we factor a negative 1 from the x squared, which is a negative x squared, we get a positive x squared, because a negative divided by a negative is a positive. When we factor it from 8x, we are going to change the sign, because a positive 8 divided by a negative 1 is a negative 8, and we keep the x. So the first step, if you have an a that's significant, in other words, it's not 1, is to take the a out of the x terms. Then we're going to proceed as we did in the last example. Skip some room here and create a perfect square from these two x terms. Now we're doing it from the x terms that were inside of the parentheses where the negative one was already factored out. So we're going to keep the negative one on the outside. We're going to create that perfect square. When we do that, we keep the x and then we take half of this coefficient that's in here. So negative 8 is the coefficient, half of negative 8 is negative 4. So we always half that. Okay. Now, to figure out how the constant balance, we come back up and in this line we skipped, we're going to multiply out that coefficient, or the, the binomial square. So x squared, negative 4x, and negative 4x for the middle terms will make a negative 8x. And then when you square a negative 4, you get positive 16. Now, you might think that you've added a 16 here, but be really careful. That 16 is inside the parentheses, and it was actually multiplied by the negative 1. So you've actually, if we come up here, you've actually kind of subtracted 16 from this equation. So to balance out the fact that you've subtracted 16, you add the 16 on the other side. So we're going to have negative 9 and that plus 16. Negative 9 plus 16 will give you 7. And it's a positive 7, so in our final result we have a positive 7 as our k value. So h of x is equal to, typically we wouldn't write negative 1, we just write negative x minus 4 quantity squared plus 7. The way to check that, if you ever want to check it, is just to multiply it back out. So if I were to multiply this back out, I would start by foiling this, um, this binomial square, keeping the negative on the outside. So if we foil that, negative 4x twice is negative 8x plus 16. Then negate everything that is in the parentheses there and then add the 7. Uh, so we get negative x squared plus 8x minus 9, which is exactly where we started up here. So the check is just to multiply it back out. The great thing about um, being able to put an equation in vertex form, it is, it is a way to find the vertex. So just as a, a quick reminder here, once we have it in this format, we know that the vertex is 4, remember to change the sign here of the inside, and then comma 7 for the y value. So vertex form does allow you to figure out what the vertex is very quickly. Here's a third example where we have a significant leading coefficient of a. In this case, uh, the coefficient a is 2. So remember, if we have a leading coefficient that's significant, we would factor it from the x terms first. 
Taking that 2 out, we get x squared plus 3x. Remember, you're only taking it out of the x terms. You keep the minus 5 off to the side. So the constant always comes off to the side. Whether it's a positive or negative, always put it off to the side. All right, now we're going to skip a line so we have room to work. And we're going to then create the binomial square. And we do that by taking the variable and then half of the coefficient. The coefficient here is 3. So sometimes you will have fractions. It's not everybody's favorite, but it's, it is going to happen. So I wanted to do an example where it does. So when we take half of 3, we get 3 halves. You could write that as 1.5 if you want. I'm going to leave it as 3 halves. Then we're going to go back to that line we skipped and multiply it out to see what that what it is we actually added into the equation by doing that. So when we do this, we're going to get x squared plus 3 halves x twice. Um, 3 halves plus 3 halves is 6 halves. And 6 over 2 is 3. So we actually get back to that 3x, which is our goal. Um, then we get that 3 halves quantity squared. 3 halves times 3 halves is 9 fourths. So what we've actually added in with this, just the binomial itself, is that we've added a 9 fourths into the equation, but wait a second, it was 9 fourths technically times 2. So really what we added in was 18 fourths, or when you simplify, that would be adding 9 halves into the equation. So when you look at it carefully, by creating this binomial squared, I've actually added a 9 halves in to the equation. So we have to balance it out by undoing it over here with the constant by subtracting it. So if you add it in, you need to balance that out by subtracting it from uh, on this constant term. So uh, we'll need to get a common denominator. Um, to be able to do this because negative 5 is over 1. So that would be 10 halves if we wanted to write it with a denominator of 2. Um, when we subtract the 9 halves from that, we will get a constant of negative 19 halves. All right. So this would be my vertex form. And the vertex for this parabola would be negative 3 halves, comma, negative 19 halves. Once again, you could check that by multiplying it out, the equation out that you've created, or you could even graph it real quickly in decimals and see that you really are getting the vertex there at negative 3 halves. Or the other thing you could do is in decimals graph this version and this version and see if they line up. Um, because I don't have decimals open right now, I'm just going to go ahead and multiply this out. So I have my answer, which was g of x equals 2 times x plus 3 halves squared minus 19 halves. I'm going to multiply this out 2 times. I'll actually show this in case you couldn't see this before. x squared plus, when I FOIL it, I get 3 halves x plus 3 halves x plus 9 fourths, because 3 over 2 times 3 over 2 is 9 fourths minus 19 halves. If I keep going here, uh, you could collect these like terms first as 6 over 2x or 3x, or even if you just distribute it here, you have 2x squared plus the 2's cancel, so we get 3x plus 3x, and then the 2 and the 4 will cancel, but I'll still be left with a fraction of 9 halves minus 19 halves, and then Collecting like terms, 3x and 3x give me 6x, and then positive 9 halves minus 19 halves is negative 10 halves, and 10 halves is minus 5. So that's where we started up here. So it does come out to be exactly the same. So again, this is called completing a square. Um, it takes some practice, but once you get it down, it can be actually quicker than using the formula for finding vertex.